So I just got back from seeing Creed 3, which stars and is directed by Michael B. Jordan, and it actually is his directorial debut. This is his first film, and it's really cool that he gets to make his first film within a franchise that he's already comfortable with. He probably knows all of the cast and crew. Ryan Coogler, who directed, I believe, the first Creed. I forget if he directed the second one also, but he helped with the screenplay. So Michael B. Jordan was really set up to enter into a world in which he felt comfortable in, and... Uh, acting and directing at the same time has got to be one of the hardest jobs that you could do because the director is responsible for so much. Not only the fact that you are the lead actor carrying the movie, but you also have to be in incredible shape. You have to be jacked out of your mind. You have to fight take after take after take. Physically exhausting, mentally exhausting. I can't imagine how difficult and how probably nerve-wracking this was to take on as your first directorial debut. But having said that, I think that uh, Michael B. Jordan's first, as a first movie, I think this was really, really, really well done. I, there was a lot of risks that he took, especially within a franchise that's been built up so much because not only is this uh, the third Creed movie, but it's technically like the eighth movie within the Rocky franchise. And I always consider the Creed movies basically extensions of the Rocky series. It's the Rocky cinematic universe, right? When I collect the movies on my movie shelf, the Blu-ray set, I have the Rocky movies and I put the Creed movies right after it because to me, it's all one super long series. You're just kind of passing the torch to the next generation. And I'll get into the Sylvester Stallone Rocky thing here in a moment, but I just want to say that as a first movie, I thought that Michael B. Jordan did some really creative things with this film. He took a very basic concept, basic premise. The plot line is pretty predictable all the way through. This is pretty much a standard paint-by-numbers boxing film. However, uh, I like some of the things that he did with it that are pretty unique to the entire Rocky franchise. Uh, for one thing, the way that he did particular flashbacks I thought was really interesting that we haven't really seen in Rocky movies before. Also, the way that he did the final fight scene, there's a sequence that I don't want to spoil anything in this movie, but... There's a sequence within the final fight where it really goes into the perspective and the mindset of where the characters are at right now, how they drown everything out, and it really is just about the focus in between these two characters. I thought he did a really, really good job with that. And again, of course, having to be in incredible shape, having to do the fight sequences, not just direct fighting scenes, but be the main character within the fighting scenes, those, uh, those aspects within itself made me really, really respect this film and his direction. There's a shot where there's him and uh, Dame, the character that's played by um, Jonathan Majors, which is like the antagonist of the film, where they are both uh, separated by a wall and there's different lighting on both sides and they're kind of like walking in separate directions but thinking about each other. The way that he kind of did stuff like that, I thought was really cool and unique, especially when you're so deep within a franchise and I know you can kind of consider the Creed movies their own franchise, but, you know, to me, it's all Rocky movies. So when you're that deep into it, to do something unique, to, to push the envelope a little bit, or to try to do something a little crazy, a little artistic, I really, really appreciate stuff like that. That was fantastic. Uh, also, I have to mention... Michael B. Jordan, of course, is, he's not like my favorite actor or anything, but I've really loved every single like behind the scenes thing, like every interview that I see with him, not just about this movie, but just in general, like he just seems like a chill down to earth person. And also the guy's a fucking nerd. All right. The guy has been outspoken about his love for anime. He's talked about how he loves Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, uh, Hajime no Ippo, and that he was going to bring some anime influences to his directing style, which I got to say that he absolutely does. There's a couple of like slow things that he does, a couple of introspective inside the character's thoughts and ideas that happen um, that I thought was a nice little touch that he did that you probably would not notice if you are not an anime fan, but if you have watched like Hajime no Ippo and things like that, which I only did recently really, um, I, wa I watched it like a long time ago and recently I've been re-watching through it, it's amazing. By the way, watch Hajime no Ippo. But besides that, uh, you see that little flavor and those little flares that he did, and I really, really appreciate that. I also love, uh, probably everyone's seen it by now, but there's a behind-the-scenes uh, like interview that he did where he's walking down the red carpet, and he gets, uh, one of the interviewers is like a chick that bullied him in school, and she picks him out to be like, oh, yeah, I know you and everything, and he's like... Thank you, right? <laughs> no, I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. I love that. I love those kind of moments where just like things come full circle, and you just like realize like if you just keep your integrity keep moving forward eventually you'll reach a level and then you'll kind of look back on your bullies and stuff like that and it'll be a completely different world man eventually things 
balance out. But that's only if you do put in the work. And what I've always loved about the Rocky movies and the Creed franchise is that, you know, even though uh, there's a lot of predictability to it, even though there's a lot of times where you know who's going to win before the fight starts, it's like you don't get there by accident. That's why every movie has its training sequence. Every movie has the characters attempting to get stronger, learning new techniques, you know, going through the motions. Um, not just not that different from how it's done in anime you know a, a lot of the characters that i've always idolized and looked up to are characters that put in a lot of hard ass work train their asses off you know push their bodies to the brink of their limits and beyond and that's how they're able to achieve the next level and the same thing has been true for fighting movies and boxing movies it's like if you don't have those training montages if you don't have those moments where you learn new things and push yourself further then you're never going to reach the next paradigm you're never going to reach the next level and so uh, the Rocky movies to me have always been super, super motivating for that reason. And I've always said it's not about motivation, it's about discipline, but motivation doesn't hurt. Motivation is great when you have it. You're not going to have motivation all the time, but when you have motivation, it is it is quite the kick in the ass. You know, I'm always watching these movies and seeing these guys that are jacked out of their mind. I'm sitting in the theater with my popcorn and I'm like, no, <laughs> I will have chicken breast tonight. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I must have protein and vegetables and do a thousand push ups before I go to bed. That's how I feel when I watch these kind of movies. Now, the elephant in the room is Rocky Balboa himself, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, Rocky is pretty much only mentioned like once in this movie. And of course, this is the, the first time that he has not made an appearance in a Creed movie or in a movie within this franchise. And that has to do with real life terms and behind the scenes stuff where the Rocky franchise is essentially, you know, the thing that not just put Sylvester Stallone on the map, but he was the front runner for it. He was the person that tried so hard originally to get it made and made this franchise what it was. He's responsible for it. It's his franchise. It's his baby. You know, it's his everything. And because of the way that rights work and producers and things like that, it got taken away from him. So he doesn't have the rights within the Rocky franchise the way that he wants to. Uh, they can do movies without him. They were talking about doing a Drago spinoff movie. You know, all of these things behind the scenes that he didn't want to have happen. So he didn't want to have anything to do with the movie. However, it seems like, and obviously I don't know, I'm just a fan, but it seems like uh, um, Sylvester Stallone, and Michael B. Jordan at least are cool with each other behind the scenes. You know, he's expressed interest in doing another movie with him, just not with the producer that's in charge of it. So it's the producers that he's mad at. It's not Michael B. Jordan. He, you know, and he supports him in his success and stuff like that. But it does really hurt not having Rocky in the movie, especially if the character's still around, the character's still alive. They haven't killed Rocky off. He still exists. Uh, so it just kind of hurt not to have him in it, especially there's a few scenes in the movie that probably could have used that boost, probably could have used that extra, you know, motivational factor of Rocky showing up at some point or, uh, you know, um, uh, Ad or, uh, yeah, Adonis, you know, talking to him or maybe giving him a call or showing up at a particular emotional scene. It, it could have helped. Now, I've made it this far in the review, and I don't want to spoil anything, but again, like, it's pretty much, you can pretty much kind of predict how the plot's going to go, but basically the general premise is that Adonis has a history with this character, Dame, from when they were children. They were, they, I wouldn't necessarily say delinquents, but they weren't necessarily, you know, in the best crowd doing the best things at the, at the time. Uh, something went down when they were kids, and... Uh, when I say kids, I mean like they were probably like teenagers, like coming into adulthood, like around that age. And something happened to Dame where he got put into prison. And basically they went their separate ways. And now Dame shows up at this particular point. And I like how the movie is able to give you both perspectives. And even though, and you can't really blame Dame in a sense because he did have that lifestyle before going to prison. He spent a lot of years in prison. You can understand how that kind of fucks somebody up. You know, he's not necessarily going about things the correct way, but he comes out, you know, and he sees somebody else living his dream, his friend living his dream, having the lifestyle that he wished he had, and feeling abandoned and feeling that sense of abandonment. And so the movie really is about um, lost friendships, can it be repaired? How responsible are you for somebody else's life and for somebody else's choices? Um, you know, if you put your neck out for somebody and then they betray you or you expect somebody to stay with you and they go their separate ways, the movie really is about that sense of friendship. So it's the friendship is kind of like the, the core theme of the movie and kind of about like how people grow up and go different ways and go in different directions and, and uh, how responsible are you 
for somebody else's life. You know, that's kind of um, the, the underlying theme of the movie, which goes from friendship to antagonism to enemies to, to everything in between. Having a rival, another uh, anime trope, you know, that's made itself in, but it's a, also a boxing, you know, fighting movie trope as well. Ultimately, I will say, I don't think Creed 3 is going to give you anything that you can't necessarily get from any of the other Rocky movies besides some unique directorial decisions that Michael B. Jordan puts in place. But uh, as far as the movie goes, it is pretty much a standard boxing movie. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, and sometimes you just need that. Sometimes you need that motivational factor. Sometimes you need those training montages. You need that, that fight sequence. And I thought the fight sequences were done very, very well. So bottom line, if you are a fan of the Rocky franchise and the Creed franchise, I think you're going to enjoy this movie. I don't necessarily think it's in like the top of the franchise if you were to rank them, but I think it's acceptable. I think it's enjoyable. I think there are some really good themes at hand. I think there's some directorial decisions that I think are really cool. And uh, for Michael B. Jordan's first movie, for this, actually, yeah, for this being your first movie, like, well done. Well, well done for this being your first movie, I would say. Uh, if you look at a lot of directors' work, you know, the, the, sometimes the first film can be a little rocky. I didn't plan that pun, but let's just end with that. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! All right, guys, so if you have seen Creed 3, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Try not to spoil anything in this video, I'm, uh, but I mean, I... You pretty much, if you see the trailer, you pretty much know what you're getting into. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and a comment because that will help it in the algorithm. Let me know what you think about Creed 3 down below. Uh, also, if you guys want to support the channel on that deeper level, I have a Patreon, channel memberships turned on, and a merch store, as well as the various social media links where you can follow me down below. Other than that, guys, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.